Hey, Power Rappers, what's going on? This is Todd Baginski. Thanks for coming back to my YouTube channel and watching another video about Power Apps. Today, I have another action-packed, riveting video about Power Apps logging. <laughs> well, maybe it's really not riveting and action-packed, but it is a pretty good video here, and I'm going to show you different ways that you can learn about how people are using your Power Apps, whether you want to call that logging or telemetry or auditing or all three. That's what we're going to learn about in today's video. And so the reason I'm making the video is because after Keith and I did the Power Apps community call a couple weeks ago, folks reached out to me and they said, Todd, I love what you're doing with the logging here in App Insights. What are some other ways that I can log info or find out who's using my Power Apps and how they're using them. And so I dug into it and I actually figured out a new way that I didn't even know about yet. So I've got three different ways I can show you how to do this and that's what I'm gonna show you now. Let's get started. Okay, method number one. Method number one is the out-of-the-box analytics that come with Power Apps. So if you are a maker in your organization or someone else who has permissions to look at the analytics for your Power Apps, what you do is you come to the Power App portal, just like I have done here. You type in web.powerapps.com and you log in. Then you click the Apps button like I've already done in the top left. Then what you're going to do is select the power app you'd like to learn more about, click on the ellipsis, and come down here to analytics. This thing has been in preview, I think, for 18 months now. Uh, it's been a long preview feature, but it does work, and it's consistent, and every time I open it up, I get the data I'm looking for. Here you can see what these analytics look like out of the box. It tells you app launch distribution by device platform. So, for example, this particular app was open once in the Android player and two times in the web player. In other words, that is a web browser on Windows. It shows you the app launch count by day. On the 19th, it got open twice. On the 22nd, it was open once. You can filter here too with these different things and it shows you how many users you had active over time. So this is actually the app that I showed in a different YouTube video and on the Power Apps community call in July. And that's why there's only a couple of times it's been open and that was by me. You can see that the data here is good for the last 30 days and it shows you the last time this data was refreshed. So I'm recording this video on July 24th here. And so this data is up to date as of about two and a half hours ago for me. Um, I'm assuming when I say that, that this is my local time that I'm looking at right up here. So you can see you can get this data you can also get this performance data, which will tell you how fast your app launched over time. See, it got better here from three seconds to 0.7. Uh, I don't even know what I did to the app to make it better, but whatever I did, I was doing the right thing. Whatever the case may be, you can see session length, app session count by session duration, and the time to view the first screen without connection set up as well as time to view the first screen with connections set up. I had no connections going on in the first screen here, so that's why that was the same. Also have location where it was open, and this is only going to be in the United States here because I'm the only one who opened it, and here you can see that that is the case. So it was opened up three times in the U.S. As we saw before, it was two times on one day, one uh, time on the other day. So that is your basic out-of-the-box analytics that you get that come with Power Apps. And that is not a ton of data, really, that tells me a whole lot about who in particular opened my app or you know, metadata about my apps, was the app updated? Was it made a hero app? All kinds of different things. I can't see how many times it was launched, but I'd like to see more. 
So let's learn now about option two, how do we get even more data without writing any code about our Power App. Okay, option two is looking at the activity logging that's happening behind the scenes right now in the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. So you can get at the same exact data about your Power Apps and how they're being used without writing any code at all. And to do so, you've got to have permissions to be able to get to the admin center, in particularly the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center for your Office 365 tenant. Um, so being a tenant admin would allow you to get to this data. I have not tried with an account with lower rights than a tenant admin, uh, but based on all the verbiage I see in this documentation Microsoft put together about this capability, I'm led to believe you have to be a tenant admin to use this functionality. So this is the new one that I really didn't even know this was there for Power Apps. I know I could do it for SharePoint and other things, but I hadn't considered looking here for Power Apps. So let me show you how you can look at this information and what you can learn from it. The first thing you'll do is you'll need to go to portal.office.com or office.com and log in. And then you'll see the page like this. And so you need to log in with an account that has the ability to get to the admin center. And so that's this link you see right here that says admin with the gear. And so once you do that, then you click on admin center and it will load it up right like this. And after the admin center rolls up, uh, in, you hit the uh, show all button, come down to the security and compliance admin center right there and give that a click. And this is what the security and compliance center now will look like. Inside of the security and compliance center, then what you can do is you can dig into this search area and pick audit log search. And when you do that, you brought to this page right here. And so what I've already done inside of this is I've already pre-filled my search criteria. And let me show you the criteria I've pre-filled and what that brought me back about the details of Power Apps in my org. So the first thing you'll do is you'll toggle this activities drop down here, which allows you to select more than one activity that's being logged in Office 365. And eventually when you scroll down, you can see if you look down here on the right, look how far I had to scroll down to get to this section of Power Apps activities. It's there, you just gotta scroll a while for it. And once you get there, you can select from these different pieces on which activities you'd like to see return. So right now I just picked launched app. I just wanted to see how many times a given user launched the app, or any user, I should say, for that matter. So then I picked a start date. So I went back like three months here, and the end date is today. And you can filter this down per user by typing in the user's name here. And then when you click search, now it comes back and it gives you the data. And you can export these results you can download them or save them to different places and work with them as you see fit. So let's take a little fictitious case here and, and try to understand um, how we would actually go ahead and use this audit log. So let's, let's say that we work for CSI and we have had somebody who is horrible and a spy and they've penetrated our company. This is crazy, huh? And next thing you know, they launched our top secret power app and they did it with a user account that was disabled previously that they activated. The suspense is killing you, isn't it? Anyway, let's pretend we're trying to figure out when all the times that app was launched and when they might have seen some sensitive data or used our app or something like that. So you fill out the criteria here and you click search and boom, you have your answers here. So I can see that on the 22nd, me, I launched an app with this ID. This isn't super helpful for me though, because if I click on it, I thought I was gonna see the display name of the app here, but all I got was this. 
And then if I click more information, oh yeah, I know now it'll tell me the name of the app. Uh, no, think again. That would be real nice to have here, but the app name is just shown as the actual GUID here. So what if you wanna actually find out who launched this app then? You can, you can see who launched it, you can see when they launched it, but what if I want to actually filter that down and find out which app did they actually launch? Well, a good way for me to go about that is to use PowerShell. So what I'm going to do now is open up a PowerShell window here and show you how I can find out which app that actually equates to. So I've installed PowerShell here I mean, not installed, opened it as an administrator. And I'm going to put in these two commands right here to put in the Power Apps PowerShell commandlets. And I'm just going to let those run here real quick. And because I've installed these before, it does not prompt me to install them again. Uh, if you haven't done that before, you'll have to hit A and then Enter and let them install. So once you're done with that, you can run this command, git power app. And if you do, the first time you run this command or any of these commands, it's going to prompt you to log in. So let me do that now. And you have to log in here with an account that has permissions in your Power App environment to uh, run these commands and do this type of administration. After you've signed in, the little pop-up will disappear. And then you can attempt to run your command again. And here you can see that I've just returned every single Power App in my organization. So what I could do is I could go looking through this list here to find out which Power App actually equates to this GUID right here. But another way I could do this is I could add the app name switch to the git power app PowerShell command like this. So here we can see I've got this GUID that starts with 1E5A right there. It's the same GUID. So I can take that value and plug it into the PowerShell command here and hit enter. And now I can run this command. And here we can see this is the error handling demo app. That's the same one that I was showing you the activity for from the analytics portion that's baked into Power Apps. So that's a way for you to correlate what you see here uh, along with the actual name of the app itself. Now, one other direction you could go with this is you could actually come back to that Power App and you could look at that error handling power app and you could see its app ID is also available right here. So if you copy the app ID from this location, you could then come back to your audit log and you could put that value in as your filter and you could filter down on that particular item. And sometimes it takes a while for that to come back, but that's how you can go about uh, your filtering capabilities there. Other things you could do if you needed to do more uh, robust auditing on here, you could export these results and then run PowerShell against these results to give you other reports as well. Let's take a look at some of the other things besides launching an app that we could do. We can look when apps are created, when apps are edited, when they're published, when they're deleted, when they're made a hero, when app permissions are edited or deleted, when an app is marked as featured, or when we even restored an app version. So if I change and I now have five activities in there and I run the search, you'll see I have a much bigger uh, list that I can go with. And in this case, it, it threw an error. It might be because I haven't refreshed this page in some time. I'm willing to bet that's what caused that. So I bet you if I refresh this page right now and then I go in and I scroll way down to the bottom again and I find those Power Apps activities, now I can probably pick a lot more of them again and then make that date a little longer and search for it. And yeah, that's all it was. I hadn't refreshed the page in a long time, so it kind of freaked out. 
It was over 24 hours actually. So here you can see there's when there's me. I created an app. I created an app. I launched a couple apps. You can see lots of different GUIDs here going on to represent the different power apps. So this is number two way to look at the telemetry on how your power apps are being used and maintained in your environment. That brings us to the third way. The third way, and I will put a link to this video in this video's description, is using Azure Application Insights or another tool that you can use to write your telemetry to. Now, in that video, I demonstrate how to do that logging, and I'm not going to walk through how I did it, but I am going to show you the final result here, and this is what it looks like. So here I am in Azure Application Insights, and I'm really looking at telemetry here from that error handling power app, the same exact one. You can see I've logged events when a certain button named BTN Create Error Global was clicked. And I'm also logging page views. You can see here's a page view, the home screen and the second screen. So you are able to get as granular as you want if these first two approaches don't work for you. You can use this third approach of rolling your own telemetry and as I mentioned, you can learn how to do that in the other video. This allows you to get as granular as you want and to really get nitty gritty all the way down to every time somebody clicks something, you can track it. So that does it for the different ways that I have identified on how to do logging or auditing or telemetry or whatever you like about your Power App. Thanks again for watching the video. I hope you got a lot out of it. You know what to do. Go hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, all that good stuff. If you'd like to work with me sometime, hit me up at canvas.com. We work with folks I meet from these YouTube videos all the time. We'd love to work on some power apps with you too. And if you'd like to see more cool videos about power apps or crazy fireworks we do on the 4th of July, check them out down here.